the um, New Zealand Infrastructure Strategy Council submission. So have we got, um, yep, David Griffiths for this one. So David, I'm aware that um, there's been quite a bit of ongoing work on this. Um, yes. And I'm also aware that there's been a extension of um, what we thought was a very constrained time frame um, for us to lodge this submission. Do you want to give us an update yep. on what's been happening yep. um, and anything that you're wanting us to consider in this meeting to inform a decision that we might make or what happens next? So, as you know, um, there's a draft. Well, there's a draft document before you, which is our um, the work the staff have done to date on. Um, putting together a submission. Um, the release of the draft um, infrastructure strategy was on the 12th of May. Um, as you as you s said, um, it was supposed to be due today, which was really pushing us in terms of timelines, but fortunately we've got an extension of time now through to um, Friday of next week. So that gives us um, some time to uh, make further considerations. Um, we've reached out across the organisation to subject matter experts um, to get them to provide their feedback to us in terms of different aspects of the strategy, um, and we have brought that together in the document that is before you now, which is our draft um, submission. We are looking um, now for um, some input from yourselves as well. If there's any further input, we sent this out to elected members for um, for input, it's um, been through ELT, and we've also specifically um, asked our Chief Resilience Officer to provide input as well, given the lessons that we've learnt in terms of infrastructure over the past 10 years in, in Christchurch. So we have put together um, the document that you see before you. Um, in particular, um, we'd probably be looking for um, some input, and I'm aware there may be some um, interest in particular areas, and particularly in terms of volumetric charging, um, congestion pricing, and centralising. So um, staff have put together some thoughts in those particular places, um, but obviously we'd, we'd um, value any feedback from elected members as well. Um, oh, and just, I have um, the team here with me, Katie, who's been doing the writing, and Rayanne. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much indeed. So, um, realising that this is a discussion about what we include in a submission. Yes. Um, let's um, move to any questions or any matters that people might want to, to raise. So, Pauline. Yeah, thank you, David. And I th appreciate the, the good points that you've raised in this. Um, number 75, integrate infrastructure institutions. That's, that's causing me a little bit of alarm, but um, moving three waters planning and ultimately transport to regional entities for delivery would effectively remove the critical mass of councils as efficient providers of infrastructure facilities and services and thus risk compromising the effective delivery of what remains. And that, and I really agree with all of that. I'm just wondering, you haven't actually put in there that we support or do not support. So with other ones you have um, put that. Um, I'm wondering if, um, well, this committee has the view to make that a little bit stronger, that we do not support the integration of infrastructure institutions? Yes, so that's, um, I guess that's an, a good example of where we would be specifically seeking <laughs> guidance from um, governors yes. as opposed to um, the staff yep. um, comments. So well, we've I've put in there um, something that certainly could be strengthened if that's the will. Yes. yes. Well, I would suggest that with the will of the committee, um, up to you. But I would suggest that we do not support integrating infrastructure institutions, making that. Yep, and I mean, if that's the case, then it would make sense for us to say that reasonably yes. strongly. Yes, so we can be explicit about that, yes, absolutely. Yep, yep that would be good. Um, I mean, it probably because is worth we're drawing We're going to make a decision later in the year as to whether we opt out of a regional yeah, exactly. water infrastructure um, amalgamation. 
And mm. uh, at this stage, we don't have the information upon which to make that decision. And I think I've said publicly on several occasions that central government have certainly made their case uh, from a central government point of view. The country is exposed to enormous future risk in terms of the cost of three waters infrastructure. Two waters, probably more so than three waters. But, so but that's not the basis for our decision making. Our decision making is what's in the best interest of our city. Mm. We haven't consulted with our communities yet. And you know, to be blunt, I don't think people care so much about um, you know whether the whether the um, the physical infrastructure is publicly owned by a council or publicly owned by a regional entity. They care about it being safe. They care about it being um, able to be removed effectively, not discharged into or causing overflows into streets and rivers. And so, th so that's what they care about: is the quality of the of what's provided, not um, necessarily whether it's a publicly owned entity at a regional level or whether no, it's owned by your local council. No, but then the negative in here is removing, you know, critical mass of councils as efficient providers. So yes, you might, we've got well, 67 you might, councils and it's different for different councils and yeah. it may be that it's the basis that we believe that we have sufficient critical mass but I would rather that we described why rather than just a blanket no. Well it's just perhaps strengthening it that's all I'm saying so you might not say we do not support you might use words like we are cautious about this move or something like that. We could I tease out more of the issues yeah. that, that those things raise. Yep. Um, and bring those more to the fore um, without explicitly saying yes or no. Mm. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And realising that there could well be a tension between the national position, what's good for the country, yes. and the local position, yeah. what's best for Christchurch. Yes. But I, I would rather that we also say that, um, that we have critical mass, that yes. our council is, is big enough to yes. be the basis for uh, um, local local provision or regional provision yeah. as the building block, you know. Yes. So, but either which way, base it on what's technically supportable, um, based on the advice that we have in front of us. That's my view, anyway. Yeah. So if if you. that can be picked up in a a strengthening but lifting up those points of discussion, yes, that would be would be good. Pauline, back to you. One more, if I may, and it's more of a, a question. So it's around depreciation. Um, and so should local authorities be required to fund depreciation, blah, blah. And, and it goes on to say... Which large, paragraph is this, Oh, I'm sorry, 79 and 80, I Thank think. Thank you. 80, 79 and 80. In 80, it says um, uh, funding depreciation is arguably of more importance to smaller councils than larger councils because larger councils can absorb even significant infrastructure replacement across a larger overall capital renewal budget. But I'm a, I don't understand why a larger council would not fund depreciation at the highest level they can. Well, we and I know that we are trying to catch up our level of, of depreciation. We fund it in a different way, and I think we have been underfunding it. I guess, I guess we're just trying to make the point there of the difference, but because this is a national strategy, the difference across the country and, and different size of councils, and yeah. some councils are more exposed, obviously, um, with their funding ability than others. So um, a larger council um, has more fl um, capacity. Yeah, kind um, of. So I mean, it's, it's in the end, we'd borrow for it anyway, so you oh, might as well I mean, fund. the principles remain the same. It's just, yeah. the, again, it comes back to this, the, the, the size. Hmm. I mean, it's not a critical point, it's just an observation. Yeah, OK, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, Jimmy. OK, thank you, Chair. Hey, the, I review 5.4, uh, 5.5, uh, you know. I'm concerned uh, if the, regarding to the social infrastructure by the local government has been omit the parks and also library recreation centre. but. 5.5, you mentioned would like to, you know, kind of uh, working together with the Greater Quality Partnership. But I'm not sure whether this item also, you know, remind them to put on. There's a kind of uh, for well-being, particular social infrastructure, whether they agree to put on. And also this partnership will cover not only our council, maybe labouring council, solving in the why may, whether they agree to pull or not. 
Yes, so um, we've been working with our partners um, and a, a draft submission went to the Greater Christchurch Partnership Committee on Friday um, of last week, I think. Um, and um, we're continuing to work with the staff at the Greater Christchurch Partnership to ensure that we have consistency okay. across our submissions. Okay. Um, so um, we're trying to ensure that we are speaking with one voice so that, so that picks up our neighbouring councils as okay. well. I mean, they will obviously be putting in um, their own submissions, um, no doubt. Um, but I do know that um, we're working with the GCP yes. staff. They've yeah. taken our submission, our draft submission, okay. and the ECAN draft submission, and used yes. those as the basis for writing theirs. Okay. Um, and um, I, I do know they're also working with the mayoral forum yes. as well in terms of the of a submission from the mayoral forum. Okay. To to ensure that consistency. Okay. That Thank you. Very good. And all of those other submissions, they've all got the same extension of time that we've got. Yes, so that's, that's so. This isn't the extension of time was not specific to to this council. It's an extension of time for all submitters on this um, strategy. So those submissions that we've been sharing information with and feeding into, any changes that are made to this draft as a result of our meeting and the further work will then feed into so those I've, other submissions. Exactly right. So I've spoken with the Greater Christchurch staff um, to let so they're clear that we're meeting t here today um, and they haven't um, actually started typing yet um, in terms of finalizing theirs so I'll be I'll be going and talking with them um, af after I get your feedback here today All just right. to ensure that, that alignment thank you Aaron yeah so um three three quick questions if if I may um in in the intro near the start it refers to a 2020 document called infrastructure under one roof uh, I I haven't read that but that sounds quite dangerous like that sounds like a government takeover of infrastructure all centralized and like Pauline's point not run by councils anymore so that was the um discussion document that came out um in 2020 yeah, it was a it was a precursor to this. So I was just kind of setting up um, what the um, consultation document would do, what the scope of it was, and um, that kind of thing. I don't know that we could read too much into the title, but they probably thought it's a it was, scary title. Yeah, well, they probably thought it was clever. But, um. So it's the discussion document that was setting the scene for the it, uh, for the scene. for the draft. Yeah, we'll just you know out. throw a grenade into the room and see if anyone's watching. Um, and uh, and the, yeah, well, it was 2020. It was a great year to do it. So um, they might have got away with that one. Uh, <laughs> then the others, um, there was one uh, on page. Sorry, page f five of ours, three of the thing around uh, the challenges, and it says define unnecessary congestion. This is under ours. There may be a congestion that is in fact necessary. Which paragraph, yeah, sorry, Aaron, um, are you referring it's to? under infrastructure challenges. Yeah, paragraph 19. 19. Uh, 19 second bullet point, yep. Yeah. Sorry, Anne, do you want to? So, sorry, what's the question? Do you, are you questioning the bullet point? Que the questioning the question. <laughs> that it's define unnecessary congestion, because um, I, I think the strategy sets out to have get rid of unnecessary congestion and is that us saying there may be congestion that is in fact necessary? It's some technical advice that the strategy itself should better define what they mean by that because you can there's many different interpretations of that. So what would be so, an example of necessary congestion? Oh, I'm not the technical expert in this area but uh, Congestion that we can use to change behaviour, as an example. Um, so not all congestion is bad. So we, if we, there's not a lot of support for that, we can remove it. It's just it was just clarifying some words that they use, some language in the strategy. That it's just an interesting yeah. concept. It is. You know what we're well, almost saying used. is there's the some term congestion. unnecessary congestion is an interesting concept in itself. Well, that's like uh, talk to a heart surgeon. Unnecessary congestion will save your life uh, if you get rid of it. Um, you <laughs> Slightly know, different. Well, if your arteries context, and that don't yes. work, and then we talk about roads being arteries, uh, and uh, 
okay. Well, if, if, the, if the table's happy with unnecessary congestion, so, then so that's the, point, the council we are. The point for us was to, um, ask, to, them to ask them to define um, yeah. the unnecessary congestion. So that was the point we were making. Um, yes, but it does say there may be some congestion that is in fact necessary. Are we saying that some congestion is necessary? Is that what we're saying? Or are we just getting clarity? That's a very technical point. Um, th there may be some situations where congestion is um, unavoidable. I mean, you cannot build um, you cannot build roads to ultimately ensure you never have congestion. Otherwise, we'd have very wide roads. But that's, that's <laughs> I wonder whether we can achieve <laughs> I, the intent well, of what's intended. You know, the the intent of what we're saying there, just by saying define unnecessary congestion and let that be that. Yep. Take up. Yeah. Take yep. Up the no, thank you. We'll do, if, we'll that do that. Meets, if that meets the technical yes, purpose yes. of putting that exactly. there, I mean, there, there may be a technical way that that's read that's different than the way we're looking at it. it uh, yeah, yep. it yep. Do, no, does we'll, seem to. We'll clarify. Yeah, please. And, and there seemed, and finally, my last one is just uh, throwing a um, disability lens over all infrastructure. I don't see a lot of that here and traditionally New Zealand has um, uh, had built prejudice yes. um, which is, uh, I don't probably need to spell out to you, some people might not understand what that means but there's a lot of places disabled people can't go. Yes. It's acceptable in our country to tell disabled people to go around through the back door, they don't come through the front because we put stick, whatever, yep. there's a tonne of it. There's not a strong lens for that on here in a country that's yeah. supposedly striving for equity. No, that's an excellent point. Yeah. If we could enhance that some way. Yeah, be, absolutely. Uh, thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. Tim. Yeah, so Tim and then Melanie. Oh, yeah. Sorry for going back to 19. Um, just two things. One is um, the first point, specify the size and price point of homes to build, because I know you know, years and years and years ago, you had to get special permission to do a four-bedroom house or something. You know, like way back in Muldoon's day, it was like, you know, Kim Jong whatever. But um, so, what what's that mean? Um, I think we'd have to go back to the um, yeah. original document, but I think it was more just again calling out a lack of specificity around the recommendations okay. in the document, so we could make that clear as well. Okay, um, and when, when we talk about 30-year infrastructure, etc., we in Christchurch um, we, we, we're unique in the fact that the <laughs> private laterals that people were paid out for didn't fix them because they went off and bought a boat or you know another car or whatever. But that has, although we can't do anything on those that private property, but it has affected the ability for our infrastructure to manage the pressure. Yep. And so I'm just wondering, is there somewhere in this document that, that can reflect that? Because if we can plan, because we've got um, new infrastructure and putting pressure on older and to maintain the older infrastructure, but that is one of the key points that we keep hearing about, that the water leaking in in a storm event into, our lap, into private laterals affects the 30-year planned infrastructure we have. Yeah, I think we do, we do cover um, private and publicly owned infrastructure, mm. but that's a specific mm. point, which is a good point, mm. yes. Because we have mentioned yes. before that we would like to press the government that when in, the, in a future event people don't get the choice whether to just take the money and not do it, because mm. they flush their toilet or whatever and it works, and, mm. but we've got to actually fix oh, one of the Sorry, just on that point, one of the other issues was um, to get the money you actually had to fund the inspection yourself um, mm. and then claim back so if the, and if they didn't agree that it was an earthquake damage causing the problem you didn't get the money back mm. so that was actually a barrier for people to or for people to understand whether the um, laterals mm. in their private properties were actually damaged or not mm. so you had a couple of barriers there to actually getting those repaired yeah, yeah I mean I, we had no trouble <laughs> at all with ours but we got them repaired whereas others that we know they went and bought yes. something that's right, and there's, there's a lot out there that yeah. we, we really don't know. But the principle is that we need it fixed rather than just handing out money. But and it's it wasn't infrastructure us, it was, at the yeah. end of the day, and it's privately owned infrastructure that yeah. has a flow a, on effect. An effect on, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, literally, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Cheers. But decided, you could actually form the land outside of the private land 
landowners have an obligation yeah, to have their laterals at a certain level of infrastructure to negate the negative impact on the public work. Yes, I mean, yeah, you, you could, but it's, it's the practicalities of, of that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. Melanie. Um, three points. So, um, first one, um, page 11, um, number 58, about um, uh, the volumetric charging for water infrastructure. Um, just looking at that consultation document, it keeps referring to waste um, water. I am I reading that correctly? So, in the consultation document, it keeps mentioning wastewater. It doesn't actually ever say drinking water. So, um, what, yeah, can you have anything further to say? Um, I thought it was this for is, both. This is drinking water, it is water, is it? Yeah, I, I, my it's understanding. It does so. say enable publicly owned water providers to charge water users directly for their services, but that doesn't say volumetric. And enable volumetric wastewater charges for large wastewater sources. Over the page, sources. on page 78, new housing development should mitigate impacts on water networks. I'll look into that and make sure it is both. But my understanding was we were talking about both. Because I, I wonder if we'll, um, I mean, I don't know what other councillors think about that, but we might look at drinking water versus wastewater in different ways. Separate them out. Maybe. I don't know. I think we need to have the discussion. Um, next one. Um, I'll just find it. Um, on page 12, um, number 64. Um, about the congestion charging. <clears throat> so when you say in Christchurch it may be appropriate to employ congestion charging mechanisms in the future, how large of a Christchurch are you thinking of? Are you thinking of our current boundaries and what what's made staff write this comment and over have you thought any more about it other than the three lines there? Uh, so I can't answer the question of geographical scope. Because so the submission is our submission, it's the city submission. So, yeah. um, so, it's so it would be open. Christchurch City, but obviously an implementation around that would be much, there'd be some challenges to look at. Um, but this particular transport pricing in itself, they, they've used the word congestion pricing, whereas the Ministry of Transport is using transport pricing. So there isn't consistency in language. But transport pricing is um, a key theme of the Ministry of Transport Emissions Green Paper. So that is one rationale for staff to support this in this particular submission. Um, it is something also that is look, being looked at through the MRT business case. Um, it's being looked at by um, NZTA. So all the, there's a lot of going. There's a lot going on in the background that would have prompted staff to suggest Christchurch is a good test case because it's happening in Auckland, potentially Wellington, we're the next one. I wonder whether we should be calling out more strongly the other interventions in this space that would serve as incentives to create an environment where congestion charging in the future could be one of a suite of measures that led to behavioural change or that led to particular outcomes. So yeah, the, to be suggesting that this would need to be done in conjunction with or after um, significant improvements to um, public transport networks and, and service provision <coughs> and um, completion of um, incentives for um, active transport and mode shift. Yes. Are there so, equitable yeah. options? Yeah. So, um, it's, it's a carrot and stick approach, but it's creating an environment where congestion charging if it was needed or considered desirable at some point in the future, and I think that's key as well, um, would be one of a suite of measures to um, achieve more people on public transport, more people walking, cycling, and more people travelling in fewer vehicles. And, and that funding in other, in other um, parts of the world, that the, the funding that comes from that charging is then targeted to making it e yeah. into public transport, as an example to make it easier for people to be able to access that. So it's, it, it one supports the other. 
So yes, it's, so that yep, would speak a to an extension of paragraph 64 yes. um, to articulate the considerations that we've just put on the table as part of that whole discussion. Yes. So, right. um, Melanie, back to you. Yeah. So another just question on that: Would it be appropriate? as Christchurch to potentially put in greater Christchurch, it may be appropriate to employ congestion charging. Right. OK. And, the, um, and then the, the last one, um, page 15, number 82. Um, centralising asset management functions and you sort of commented on this before where you were looking across the country but most of what is written here is talking about um, small councils that may have poor records and that being a rationalisation for not centralising which is not a very good reason they should have good records so um, <laughs> um, I don't know um, if we should be even putting that there and if we should be saying something else, I don't know. But Maybe it's not a good rationale for not centralising things because they've got poor records. It's actually a, um, a rationale for centralising if they have poor records because there should be a process to get them to have good records. But I'm not necessarily for centralising. So, so I guess what we're trying to say there, <laughs> centralising, you, you might be um, <laughs> suitable me. for those smaller <laughs> councils, but we're in a council like ours where we've got the information and we've got the institutional knowledge, it may not necessarily be the right thing to do. So um, what, we're, what we're calling out there is, yes, we understand the argument, um, but it doesn't necessarily apply to every council. So we could strengthen and clarify that. Yeah, that would be good. So it's almost weakening. It may be an option, especially where it's, you know, if you, even if you remove the word especially, then that changes the nuance there quite considerably. Yes. No, that's helpful. Thank you. All right. Who else did I have? Anne, did you have something? I was just wondering about um, the recent decision that Waka Kotahi made in terms of pulling out $420 million from um, the kind of stuff we're talking about and how this, you know, in, in trying to understand that in the context of this. Is there any connection, or how does it...? There is a comment we've made. Sorry, I don't know what that There's is a it. paragraph in here which is so really the, good. It talks about yeah. an example of one way not to do this yeah. is... that is where we... So we've, we've yeah. picked that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good. Paragraph 74. OK, that's cool. And also, just thinking about well-being, um, 15, uh, when, whether we need to be stronger about the focus on well-being and how you know, we say careful consideration is needed as to what is meant by value for money um, in terms of, of, of that and how should could in, in equity and all those sorts of things. Is yes. there any way that we could strengthen that a wee bit more in terms of... Which know, paragraph were you reading? Sorry, it's, par it's in the principles, outcomes and principles, number 15. I mean, just relating to that last question, you know, the fact that there'll be bridges that, that um, heavy vehicles won't be able to go on in little communities that will mean that they won't get postal delivery, for example, or they won't, you know, those, just yep. sort of making those connections to yes. the fact that these funding decisions will have an impact on the well-being of a community in some way. Yeah, yeah thanks. Thank you. Yanni. Uh, thank you. Um, se several things. One is... Um, just, just to raise the concern around the congestion charging. Um, so I, I don't support us look at, looking at that or enabling enabling that to be considered here. And we were looking at changing that to transport pricing yep. um, to get away from the congestion. Yeah, so I think there's a bit of discussion mm -hmm. to be had in there. So, yep. Y yeah, I don't... I mean, you know, if, if you look oh, for, a, a, for example... You know, we've got a whole bunch of other stuff around like PT that's just not working. So I don't, I think we should be explicit. So we address I don't know how that. Others probably yeah. disagree, but. Yeah. What the, the previous discussion was, um, any consideration of that would need to be in the context of improvements to other transport interventions so that it could be seen in the future as a suite of measures. So there are a number of 
um, considerations around that that probably reflect what you're I saying. I just about think fundamentally we're different than Wellington and Auckland. We keep getting Wellington and Auckland solutions imposed upon us, which actually, in my view, fit for purpose, like the urban development, um, you know, the national policy yeah. statement on urban development. So, you know, but um, I mean, people obviously have a different different view. So, um, just the waste minimisation. I note that you. You know, I think a lot of what's in there is quite good. You, but you talk about regional solutions. I, I wonder whether there needs to be more thought to national solutions. I mean, it, it seems crazy in a, a country the size of New Zealand <clears throat> that that we wouldn't look at New Zealand-wide solutions. And I, I mean, I think that's where the government was going with the funding that they put in. I don't, I don't know enough about it. But you know, having a, a consistency of what can be recycled across the country rather than oh, yeah, yeah. every different area, for example. Um, and having actually strategic investment in infrastructure that can take the whole country's waste and recycle it or, or manage it would seem to be better <coughs> yep. than just having even regional solutions. Yep. So, yep. Um, but I think most of what, what's in there is really good, um, especially product stewardship by the, the manufacturers, I think is is really important. Um, the the depreciation, I um, so that's on that's the section 81. I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. I know a few years ago the government did actually change the rate. Was it the depreciation rate of public assets from 50 years to 30 years? Is this proposing to put it back to, to 50? Is that why we've made that comment? I don't think it says that, no. No, no, we're not, we're not suggesting that. No. Sorry, but why have we referenced the um, 30 to the 50 years? What, what was behind referencing that? <coughs> or is that just an example? That with That's an, yeah. yeah. So levels of service can change over a period of, say, 30 to 50 years. Essentially, we're just using that as an example of how long a level of service might be in place, but oh, okay. could change. So I think there is an argument to be made with central government around extending the um, for, for major assets. And VBase, I mean, the old VBase or CCHL should have some information on this, but effectively for our bigger public facilities like Metro Sports, like the stadium, the multi use arena, sorry, um, the ability to charge depreciation over a longer period of time for us is a lot better than the shorter period of time. And my understanding was there were changes <coughs> made probably about 15 years ago that did have an impact on, so it did increase our costs quite considerably. Yep. So I just wanted to raise that as something that. Okay, um, no, thank you. It was good to look at. We'll I know Dunedin Council's also done a very interesting thing around depreciation on their stadium, um, and I don't, I don't know exactly what it is, but I, you know, I think it's worth us having that flexibility. So I think it's good that you've you've kind of referenced a lot on depreciation, but there might be a tangible example that we okay. could use in our no. submission. And it would be good to pick up no. the depreciation period as re able to reflect the period that a facility is likely to remain in existence. Yeah, that's so right. if we're building a 50, uh, um, facility with a projected 50-year lifespan, it would be reasonable to expect to depreciate that over a 50-year period. Yeah. Yeah. No. The only other two points I wanted to make was, um, I mean, I think the whole issue of volumetric charging for water has been discussed, so I don't, I don't support us. Um, supporting that. Which paragraph is that, Yanni? Uh, well, it's referenced several times in it. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Thank you. This council has not made a decision to support volumetric charging. We've made a decision to, to support excess charging. So I don't want. I don't like to see that written there. To say that we agree with this recommendation certainly is stronger than any decision that this council has made. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And it, again, I think it comes back to clarity around terminology. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I, yeah. I pick that point up so yeah. we can um, adjust that so that we're clear about what we've agreed to do. Yeah. Thank you. And just just the other two issues were um, they really support the international visitor conservation and tourism levy. I'm a little bit concerned at us raising um, the ability to set a visitor accommodation tax. Um, I mean, I'm just, I, I don't know how others feel about it, but, you know, I think having access to a contestable fund from the border levy is a, is a good way to get that revenue. Um, I, I wouldn't want to see each council having to make a decision about whether they put bed taxes in place, for example. 
Um, and the other, the, the final point was on the value capture mechanisms under 77. So, I mean, I think we do need to, like, when we rezone land, we, we, we basically, um, the Queenstown example, you know, people do actually make a significant profit off the rezoning decisions. So not to have any value capture mechanisms or any mechanisms to encourage, you know, affordability or social housing to be built or integrated transport to be built or integrated cycleways. It's just, to me, seems crazy. So I, Yeah, I think what we're, yeah. we're trying to say there was not trying to um, say that we... Um, support or don't support, what we're trying to say is that um, it can be a clumsy tool, so that if you're going to introduce that you need to think carefully about it and introduce it in a way that actually achieves the outcomes you're trying to achieve, because you're quite right, um, value uplift um, for significant infrastructure um, input, by the, there can be significant inf um, value uplift in an area if, if you put a tram down there or whatever, or a, or a, a bullet train or something like that. Um, so um, we don't disagree with the concept, it's just that when you do it, you need to do it properly. Right. So we can, we can clarify that, if that helps you. Okay, thank you. Just coming back to that um, paragraph 58 on volumetric charging, um, if we were just going to turn the volume down a little bit on the the council agrees we probably want to have a look at that last sentence there as well the case for volumetric charging for wastewater seems less compelling but should be enabled regardless um you might want to tone that down so you know could be considered regard you just yep. again if we're turning the volume down on that whole paragraph that's another sentence you might want to have a look at yep yep so i've got sarah and then leanne sarah I mean, the reality is that we have a form of volumetric charging that we've just agreed to, but what we have done as part of that is that we have set a base that is completely free, and above that, it's volumetric. And that's so correct. that's the reality, isn't it? Yeah, that's what um, I say. We need to clarify that. So too, what, what I, instead of watering down the volumetric thing, I, what I'd like us to see is that um, people's basic needs are catered for for free to start with, or you know, in some other way, because actually we have just done that. Um, yeah. So and changing that paragraph to reflect the decision that was made yesterday, yes. yeah. that's probably the guiding principle yeah. Yeah. for the changes you're yes. going to make. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, I think just generally, I, I don't want, I mean, we've had a whole pile of expert staff from across our council um, looking to the future, and I don't want the feedback um, watered down by one or two comments that we really haven't discussed as a group. Yeah, I um, and I think that. Um, that would be risky for our, for us if we were just watering down stuff no. and, and, and sort of not giving ourselves the options. We're asking for the opposite. <laughs> In an ideal world, it would have been good to have workshopped this, mm -hmm. but of course, with the well, we we all had chance to read it and send in oh, feedback yeah. ahead of time. I was happy with it, and so you know, so I didn't send any comments back in because I was happy with it. Yeah. Um, but you know, people, everyone's had the opportunity to Everyone's do that. Seen it, yeah. All right, um, Leanne. Well, I was going to say something completely different, which was um, this was an infrastructure strategy consultation document um, that only went out in June. We were working to a time frame that they extended to the 2nd of July. Mm. I don't think that we should workshop um, the content of a submission in a, in a meeting like this. Yeah, this I'm is finding for the this debate. reasonably difficult I'd to I'd rather chair. debate the issues than to do this. It doesn't reference the, the real challenge of public transport. There's yeah. a separate consultation going on on the Piton model at the moment, which we've submitted on. That needs to be brought into, into this context. It completely um, ignores resilience and sustainability in the outcomes. It has a very treasury-focused definition of efficiency. Um, and it has, um, I mean, it highlights the principles, uh, a number of principles, which are good principles for decision-making um, in infrastructure. Uh, the one that is captured by my irritation and fury about public transport is integrated. They say that that's one of the principles, and yes, it's completely absent uh, from any consideration of public transport, which is core infrastructure as identified by the people of New Zealand when they went out with the first discussion document. And actually last year was a good time for a discussion document. There's plenty of time for, for, for reading. So um, I, I don't know whether everyone around the table has actually read the full consultation document. 
but I, I'd like to take it offline and just do a little bit more work on it. We could we could um, bring it back by, you know, and and get people to to maybe we could just say that by round robin we could approve it. Um, it is only a submission, but I'd rather that we put in a really good, powerful submission yep, on behalf of the city um, rather than uh, workshop points and then come back and debate it. We can debate it after we've submitted it, but I'd rather have a public debate about the issues that we care about, which are actually, a lot of them are contained within here, and many of them are being dealt with in other government reviews. Yep. Resource management review, that's all the spatial planning stuff on a regional basis. Um, the question about the three waters infrastructure, that's being dealt to as well. Um, Waka Gotahi's just you know, sent out decisions about certain funding matters that are going to be pulled. You know, So we've got all of these things and the Piton model happening at the same time. There are a number of things that we could really, I think, add some, some real weight to this. So I'm sorry I didn't get a t chance to read the the submission earlier um, and and make make views known on it. I, I, yeah. I and I should have intervened earlier. I just would rather that we approve the general philosophy and principle and 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 then set up a small working group, not to make typographical changes or whatever, but just actually get a. Oh no, you've got. Um, so this is the, yeah, the green approval. resolutions. Yeah. I mean, we had these as back pocket resolutions, anticipating that this might be yeah. where we would end up. Because um, I mean, I, I deliberately allowed a bit of talking across the table in a reasonably informal discussion that we wouldn't normally have in a um, public meeting like this. That actually speaks to that's the type of discussion we need to be able to have before we finalise it. So yeah. delegating to a smaller group to finalise and then bringing it back, Leanne, as you suggest. But I would like us to debate it in public. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is a workshop discussion. It's not a, a you know, the public front-facing one should be us expressing our views, sitting around the table, you know, representing our yeah. wards in our city. So bringing it back, as you suggest, to a future meeting so that we can have even that if debate, after we've submitted even it, if it's yeah. after the fact. Yeah. All right. So um, let's capture that in some resolutions then now and take the rest of this discussion into that smaller group. Um, and we'll also delegate to the smaller group to sign off on the submission, but then we'll note that a further report on this be brought to a future, well, either meeting of this committee or to a, I mean, given that it's a wide-ranging discussion, Andy, right. won't that brought Bring to a to council, council meeting? Bring it yeah. to the next council meeting. Yeah. 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 All right, so let's um, capture this. So who is interested um, in being part of that small group that we name in the resolution? So. Um, I might make a list as we go. So Pauline, Sarah, Leanne, Yanni, Melanie. Um, Sarah, I've got you. Jimmy, Anne. I'll put my name on there as well. Oh, that's a small group. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a group of We continue interested to highlight people. effectiveness and efficiency, don't we? <laughs> it's a group of eight. <laughs> yeah, all right. So delegate to mayor and deputy... Mayor, delegate to mayor, deputy mayor... And Chief Executive was in here as well. So to Mayor, Deputy Mayor and Chief Executive to sign off. But in exercising that delegation, we'll draw a group of interested people together for some further discussion yep. before we do it. Yep. yep. And that can be taken on trust. Yep. That's fine. And then a report, a further report on this submission to be brought to the next available council oh, meeting. Why, why don't you just, I don't want to further report on this. Excuse me. I don't want to put any work on staff at all. It yep. will be added to the mayor's report at the next council meeting. So it'll be an, a, an addendum to the mayor's report, and we can Excellent. we can debate it um, along with that. So it's just note that an addendum to the mayor's report on this matter will be brought to the next available council meeting. Because yeah, that's fine. Note this. Note that an addendum. to the Mayor's report
note there's an addendum to the Mayor's report on this matter. Will be brought. Um, to the next available council meeting. All right, so if you make that a paragraph two, and then we've got something that's workable and that allows a sensible approach, particularly given that we hadn't anticipated we were going to have the time to do it this way, and now we've got the benefit of that extra yeah, time. We don't. We don't. All right, so can I have a mover then for these two recommendations? Okay, so Pauline seconded Sarah. Is there any debate on this? Sam? Just if the public want to watch our workshops, this is a really good example of it. So. <laughs> very true, actually, yes, very, very true. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, Aaron, you want to speak to this? Just, just a couple of points. I'm not a huge fan of this process. I think our submissions to government are, are really, really serious. And we are the second largest council in the country. And what we say uh, is important and should be important. Um, we're the, obviously the largest spot in the South Island as well. And uh, so for me, it should, be, uh, it should have been done by full council because there's a lot of language that's in this that I don't necessarily um, agree with. Um, I think this infrastructure, the whole infrastructure under one roof, is a clear signal of a central government takeover of infrastructure. It's already happening to three waters. I hope everyone's seen the air. It's pretty clear. Um, and it's going to happen to more and more. And you've got the local government review. You're voting yourselves out of a job. And, uh, and I think the people of New Zealand want local representation. They want the ground-up approach. I think the top-down approach was, was bagged last decade, but it's, it's back and alive and well. And the other one that's in here is, um, well, that, that comes up around this table almost on a daily basis, is behavioural change. Do the people of Christchurch actually want behavioural change driven on them or pushed on them by the council. I don't know that we have that mandate. And, uh, and scarily enough, behavioural change actually turns up on the, um, there's a page on the uh, DPMC um, that uh, explains it. And I'll just, I'm just going to read something. It says, in these theories, behaviour change is a matter of changing people's attitudes, beliefs and perceptions of social norms. I don't know that we live in a country where elected members are elected to do that. Uh, we used to be the home of the free and the land of the naive. <laughs> Sarah. Um, <laughs> it's hard to know where to start. Um, and I think I've just got to the point where uh, when, it looks at, when we look at local leadership and locally elected members, um, I'm just... Um, sick of sitting and listening to people uh, spouting off incoherently about things they've never actually looked at or read or um, spent time actually taking a serious thought about. Uh, infrastructure is a long-term investment. We do need to take it seriously. Um, when Councillor Nkewin mentions everyone needing to be involved in the workshop, you know what? It would be nice if you turned up. Thank you. Is there any further debate, Pauline? Um, just, just to thank staff, I think there's some really good stuff in here that you've identified and, and that I support. And um, just on that behavioural change thing, yes, nobody can dictate a behavioural change, but it's providing the environment mm. and the mechanisms around that to encourage it. And a good example of that is the, the no smoking inside thing, that you go to other countries now and you see people smoking inside, well, in the old days when we used to go to other countries, and it's kind of like, oh my goodness, We've all changed. We don't expect nobody does that here anymore. So that's a classic example of voluntarily changing a behaviour through encouragement. So I think that's where we're coming from, not not dictating. But I also I, I am aware of what Aaron's saying about this top-down thing. I feel there's a big um, sea change there. It almost a big change for local government is being um, forced. Well waved in front of our faces and it's up to us to make very careful uh, decisions around this and to, um, and to place very important feedback and this is an example of what we're doing here so thank you again. Thank you. Yanni. 
Yeah, I mean, I want to acknowledge the work that staff have actually put into what is a really detailed and thoughtful submission. So, you know, I really appreciated having the chance to read through it. Um, I think if you reflect on Christchurch's recent history, perhaps no other city in New Zealand has had as much direct central government interference in local um, things, especially infrastructure, that, that we have. And I think we've got a lot of valuable insights to offer to the rest of the country about actually the um, benefits or otherwise of that. You know, we've, we've seen, um, I mean, this whole idea that if everything's centralised, it's, it's more cost effective and efficient, just doesn't, doesn't bear out in some of the projects that we've seen happen being delivered by central government in our own city. So I think it's really important that we do take the time. I think the frustration is that, you know, this is a critical piece of thinking for the country and, and has a huge impact on local councils, and yet it's been done in the, the same time that we're in the middle of our long-term plans. So, you know, I just the timing is, is terrible, and I think the Mayor alluded to that um, previously. But I, I do think we need to do a little bit more work just thinking through a little bit in a little bit more detail. Or um, I always like to give case studies when we do make submissions to central government so that they can actually see the reality of what some of these high-level thoughts are because I think, you know, experience is a good indicator of um, learning. And um, so, yeah, I, I mean, there's things that I'm con very concerned about in what's being proposed, but I do think at some stage we do have to recognise that in a country of five million people, the idea that we all compete to build bigger stadiums, bigger airports, bigger ports has a cost. And so you do need to actually think about, I think, a smarter way of delivering basic infrastructure in a country the size that we are. And I look forward to that conversation continuing. Thank you. Leanne. That, that's exactly the sort of debate that I actually want us to have. We've got 67 territorial authorities in this country that are a, a, a massive scale from, from Kaikoura District, I think is one of the smallest, um, all the way through to Auckland City. Uh, there are completely different um, challenges facing each one of those. And for the first time, the government has said, show us all of your figures, show us your numbers, show us the quality of your asset management plans for your three water infrastructure. And I can imagine what the Minister um, of Local Government uh, received by way of a report and her reaction to it. And I'm sure that's exactly what's driving uh, a, a lot of the Three Waters reform process. This is the New Zealand Infrastructure Commission, which has been tasked with government with looking more broadly across the concept of um, infrastructure. And it's not just those that are provided by um, local government, it's provided by central government and provided uh, by the private sector as well. So it's looking at a range of resilience things, a, a range of infrastructure. But to me, it's the resilience and sustainability outcomes that are absolutely core critical to where we are in the future and what we leave for the next generations to, um, to inherit. And that's why I agree that this is a really um, important uh, piece of work that we do need to put into. And I too want to acknowledge the staff for, for what they've done. They've been working under an incredibly impossible time frame. With all of the other reviews that are going on at the same time, as Yanni said, the long-term plans, all of the councils are in this position, which is why they've pushed it out. Um, but by essentially, it's only a week. It's next week it's got to be in, which is why we don't have another meeting that we can bring it back to. But anyone who wants to contribute um, in any way, I've already picked up, Aaron, your point around disability, um, and, and you're absolutely right. We do need to factor that in. But I think the one thing that we shouldn't pretend is that when you talk about behaviour change, it is actually because we um, externalise a number of the costs and we do not make people pay for the true cost um, of the impact that they're having on our city and on our environment. So um, I'm, I'm very much in favour of um, proceeding down a sensible pathway here. Yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased that we're proceeding down the path of um, gathering a, a group of people that are interested in this and want to have further discussion. Um, to absolutely respect the huge amount of work I know that staff have, have done on this, and it was articulated that you've drawn thinking across a number of different parts of the organisation together um, as you've, you've put this, um, what we're now thinking of as draft submission um, together. 
and thank you to the people that are sitting at the other end of the table, but thank you to all of the other staff across the various departments of council, the various uh, different areas in council, who've clearly fed a lot of knowledge, a lot of technical knowledge into the draft submission that we see in front of us. So thank you for the work that you've done um, to get us to this point today. I mean, this submission um, does consider a number of um, big issues a number of the very big issues that impact us today, but more to the point, will impact us in the future. Um, issues that we as elected members are interested in, but issues that our communities quite rightly are interested in, is because these relate to you know, changes that um, are made to the fabric of the city and the way that we do things um, in the city. Infrastructure um, is both an enabler and a constraint, and we need to make sure across the many different facets of infrastructure um, we get that absolutely right. So um, it is good that we've got the approach that we're taking that's reflected in these resolutions. Um, thank you to those people that have indicated that they want to be part of that um, informal discussion which will take place between now and the um, exercise of the delegation to finalise the submission. Um, I'd encourage you know, as, as much discussion as we can possibly um, get there, given the importance of the issues. Um, we also touched on the whole concept of how infrastructure can lead to a difference in behaviour and the, the, the carrot and stick approach and what's described in the report as congestion charging um, was a really good example of that. You can incentivise people to do things differently or you can use a big stick to, I guess, have a go at making people do things differently. Cuts to the comments that Aaron made, um, where I do believe that we as, an elected member, uh, we as elected members and elected body do have a responsibility to lead by example to create an environment where change can take place, and infrastructure obviously plays into that environment, and to do exactly what we've done this morning and what we'll do in the next stage, facilitate discussion that leads to the opportunity for change to be made. We don't need to use the big stick all the time, but we can certainly play our rightful role in contributing to the discussions and contributing to the environment that allows good change to be able to take place. So I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Against, that's carried. Thank you. Now, at this point, I'm going to adjourn the meeting for um, what will be, uh, by then, perhaps a 15-minute break until 11.35. So we'll adjourn till 11.35. Now, as I adjourn the meeting, um, I'd like to call on um, Leanne just to say a few words. We've got Kaharoa um, in the public gallery. Is this the way this was going to play out or not? Oh, God. No, I haven't got the card. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, OK. <laughs> Sorry. Right, I, I had a note that told me exactly the opposite to that. I wasn't aware of what was happening. Shall we leave it till the end of the... Right, OK. All right, let's... <laughs> I, 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 I expected this to be discussed too, it hasn't. Been. We'll do that later. Yeah. All right, let's, let's adjourn, and then we've got CCHL, and then we'll move into other matters after that. Thank you.